Hi everyone. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at what information is contained within the margin data of an FAA approach plate. Now the margin data is often overlooked because most of us just use it to find the approach that we're going to be flying. In reality, the data actually gives us quite a bit of information that'll help you find the proper procedure to fly for an airport. So first, we have the name of the approach. In this case, this is the ILS to runway 34 at Asheville Regional. Now the name of the approach actually gives us some important information. In this case, it's the ILS or localizer. What that means is if you don't have the full ILS receiver, you could just use the localizer portion of the approach. The OR indicates one or the other is needed. The runway 34 indicates that this approach is aligned within 30 degrees of the runway of landing. So when you break out, you'll be within 30 degrees of runway 34. Now some approaches, such as this VOR DME runway 23 left, have a slash between VOR and DME, or it may be between localizer and DME, or some two components that are required together. The slash indicates that both components are required. So you must have a VOR and a DME receiver to fly this approach. Now this approach, the VOR alpha approach, doesn't indicate a runway. This means that this approach has circling minimums only. It will bring you to the airport, however it will not align you within 30 degrees of a runway of landing. Now you may see a VOR Bravo, a VOR Charlie, a GPS Alpha, a GPS Bravo. The letters go in sequential order. So for this is the first approach for this airport that does not have a runway designation. So if there was a VOR Alpha and a GPS Bravo, the VOR Alpha would be the first approach that did not line up with the runway. The GPS Bravo would be the second approach. And you might have an NDB Charlie, which is the third approach that does not line up with a runway of intended landing. Next, we have the name of the airport. In this case, Asheville Regional. Now this is the name of the airport itself, not of the city or state that the airport is located. You can see the city and state are in the upper left corner. The airport name is important if you're calling on CTAF or making your call to tower. In this case it would be Asheville Regional, not just Asheville. Now in the far upper right corner, we have the Julian date of the amendment of this approach. In this case, it was 2011 on the 97th day. Finally at the top is the FAA's computer designation for this approach. When the FAA goes to find this approach in its database, it'll use the number 5061. Now let's take a look at the bottom margin data. So on the bottom, we can see in the lower left corner, we have the city and state name again. And then we have the amendment number and the date of the amendment. If you can remember from the top, the Julian date was 11097. This corresponds with the 7th of April 2011. Next in the middle we have the lat long coordinates of the airport itself and in the lower right again we have the procedure name and the airport that the procedure goes to. And that's all for margin data on an FAA instrument approach chart.